Immediately after Israel was established in the promised land of Canaan, it was governed by a system of judges and God was considered to be their supreme ruler or king. But by the time of 1 Samuel, the people started to demand a human king in order to be like the other nations around them. In spite of God's warnings about this, they persisted with the request and God obliged. The first human king was Saul, who was soon replaced by David, and this takes us into the book of First Kings in the Bible, where the subsequent succession of kings are documented. These transitions of leadership led to a downward spiral and the eventual division of Israel, and throughout it all we see a constant invasion of Baal worship over the years, Satan was still going with plan A at this point. The pivotal figure was King Ahab, and just as Nimrod's importance was hinted at by the extra attention given to him in Genesis, the same can be said of King Ahab in the book of 1 Kings. The writer makes sure to elaborate on his reign and to tell us his story in greater depth than the other kings. The Bible says of Ahab that he did evil in the Lord's sight, even more than any of the kings before him. This guy was the worst of the worst. There had been bad kings before, but no one touched Ahab. Not only this, but he married a woman called Jezebel, who was the princess daughter of Ethbal, Canaanite king of Tyre and Sidon, and priest of Astarte. You couldn't get a worse combination of titles, and clearly this was not the kind of family the king of Israel should have been marrying into. For a people that God was intent on keeping undefiled and pure, this marriage would pose significant problems. As expected, soon after their marriage, the pollution began. Ahab established a temple for Baal and Asherah pole in Israel for his wife's sake. An Asherah pole is basically an obscene phallic symbol, otherwise known as an obelisk. But Queen Jezebel was not content to simply allow the worship of Baal and Asherah concurrently with the worship of Israel's true God. She was determined to eliminate worship of the true God altogether. She embarked on a campaign whereby most of God's prophets were killed, and in their place were installed false prophets for Baal and Asherah. She successfully controlled Ahab, implemented idol worship, and had him build a temple in their honour. As a result, the biblical record shows Israel plunging from the heights of David's glorious and godly reign to the depths of the pagan idolatry and Satanism under Ahab. And this was in many ways Israel's darkest hour. Satan was very close to winning God's chosen people to himself, once and for all. The apostasy of Israel was almost complete. The foundations of godliness were fast crumbling. The judgment of God was forthcoming. Now, do Ahab and Jezebel remind you of anyone? They were virtually identical to Nimrod and Semiramis. It's almost as though Satan thought to himself that since this tactic had worked so well in Babylon, it might just be the one that would finally clinch victory in the battle to subvert the Israelites. Like when a play or a shot works particularly well in sports, you're tempted to use it again in the hope it produces the same result. This is what he was doing. He was attempting to create the same kind of structure within Israel that he had created in Babylon and was hoping the same end would be achieved. Just as Samiramis had risen to power on the coattails of Nimrod, the evil Jezebel wed herself to Ahab and introduced idolatry into their life as an evil religious practice. This was probably not a marriage of love, rather it was a spiritual and political affiliation designed to merge two different kingdoms. Just as Semiramis had an insatiable lust for power and would go to any ends to retain it, even killing her husband and plotting to kill her son, we see the same kind of spirit in Jezebel, a lust for power, control and domination. Given her background in Baal worship where sex acts and licentious living was exalted as a way to tap into the power of the gods, she would have had no qualms about sleeping her way to the top. Ahab, king of Israel, was completely subdued and dominated by Jezebel. Israel was now full of pagan shrines, filled with priestess prostitutes servicing the worshippers. The sexual lure was more than the men of Israel could resist. By Jezebel's influence, 10 million Israelites left the worship of God for Baal and Ashtoreth. Only 7,000 people in the entire nation were not swayed by her control. This is how close Satan came to claiming Israel and thus removing the last remaining barrier between him and world domination. God, however, as always, had a man for the job, Elijah. Jezebel had killed most of God's prophets but hadn't managed to get her hands on Elijah yet, and it was he who God used to turn Israel back from the brink. It all took place on Mount Carmel, a direct showdown between God and Baal.